OTR, year 2000. That's off the record. Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady on OTR together. They've lived a lifetime in the decade since. Tracy left. It's been a rough three years for them. Vince starred. Air Canada sorry. Then departed. Oh, yeah, graduated, too. Today, Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady, older, wiser, richer, talk openly about playing in Toronto, leaving Toronto, and returning to Toronto. And they're joined in studio by the only man who ever held them accountable, power forward, warden, and vice principal, Oak. Oakley puts it up. This could be it. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg. Brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends. See you tonight. Exactly 16 years ago, the Toronto Raptors tipped off their history. The opening tip. We're underway. Predictably, they were terrible. But then, piece by piece, it began to come together. The first big piece, high schooler Tracy McGrady. McGrady! Oh, oh, oh. The Raps got the next key piece at a McGrady family dinner drafting his high-flying cousin, Vince Carter. Are you kidding me, Air Canada? Sorry! Perhaps the key move, though, was trading for the Knicks' Charles Oakley. He was Wendell Clark in purple. Charles Oakley taking a charge in his old team. Oak, Vince, T-Mac, and a million vets led Toronto to its first playoff performance in 2000, a sweep by the Knicks. Johnson for three! Face it in! <laughs> But another block to build with. Then McGrady bolted. Oaken Carter took the Raps to game seven of the second round. Carter at the buzzer. No good. That was the end for Oakley in Toronto. Three years later, Vince was gone. Today, on OTR, for the first time in a decade, those three men are together. And you know two words that will be mentioned. What if? Vince, Tracy, and Oak, at one time, all household names in any Canadian house where basketball was big. And all three join us in the OTR house. Charles is here, Vince and Tracy um, from their respective places. Vince in his restaurant, Tracy in his home. When was the last time, Oak, you start with this, when was the last time the three of you guys would have been together in a conversation? Conversation? Uh, probably back in 2000. But I talked to him as the season passed over the years. But right. together, together, like we was in Toronto, that was the best. We I mean, you know we had a great time. Do you guys agree with that? Great time, the best sharing times with Charles Oakley. Always. Of course, it's always good times. I mean, you can pick. I mean, different situations, different moments on the road, even at home. You know, he's a. Uh, uh, Outstanding chef, so he's always. I was definitely one to be at his house if he was cooking or thinking about cooking. And I know uh, T Mac can probably say the same thing. Uh, as far as that, you know, we've all gone different ways as far as just being on different parts of the coast. And, you know, so we don't really get a chance to, to see each other, I mean, or all get together as one. So this is, you know, I think this is a great opportunity to do so. But, you know, we still, like I said, I've, I've seen Oak on the road and I talked to Tracy on the regular. Yeah, I talk to I talk to uh, Oak every now and then. Um, I always talk to Vince. Um, I can't remember the last time the three of us have been together. But uh, what I did used to look forward to is uh, always going to Cleveland to Oak's house and having a big uh, meal for the whole team. <laughs> so, um, Vince, did, did Charles Oakley make you a better player? Same thing for you, Tracy, but obviously you left um, earlier on in your career. But uh, did he hold you accountable the way everybody thought he was? Uh, definitely. Even day one. Uh, I, I remember the second day of practice, Oak put his arm around me and said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to show you, how, show you the ropes and, and, and make you a better player. And, you know, what do you say to that? You're like, no. Oh, so he's like, all right. And I tell you what. I can say that I was prepared each and every night, uh, you know, being a rookie and kind of learning the ropes and learning as you go and, and playing. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have, you know, my cousin on one side and, you know, uh, a savvy veteran like, like Oak on the other day in and day out preparing me and, and giving me the opportunity to really learn the ropes and make it easier for me. How about you, Tracy? I mean, the age gap, like, that you were in totally different stages in your lives, right? I mean, Oakley, he called him a, a savvy veteran. I mean, there are other mm. adjectives you could use. Old man at that time. But <laughs> what did he bring to your game? Don't give me that look, Oak. Don't give there me you that go. look. No, Say the words you shouldn't be talking about. You know, my, my first year, my first year, it was, um, 
you know, a case where I was with a bunch of young guys themselves, and I, I really didn't respect. I respect them as as uh, players, but you know, just as being veterans in the game, I didn't really have that that much respect for them because they really wasn't that that much older than me in terms of years. Um, so when I played with Oak and uh, the, the rest of our veterans, you know, just watching those guys and you know how they carry themselves, so they're always suited for games and just you know <clears throat> different things that you know makes you a professional in this league. I followed them and I learned from them. And and the one thing that I really uh, appreciated about Oak and uh, Vince could attest to this as well is he always had our back no matter how young we were he always had our back and we don't have that in the game today you know that's gone out of our game I mean if we got if we got fouled hard in the game you best believe somebody on that other team is going to get fouled hard and he just took care of us we got to go to break but I want to ask Oak to follow that up you you do know that you play more of a hockey style than anything else that in hockey they have this code which is you got to have your brother's back right. you, you saw that as your role right in fact Butch Carter told you that quickly well my thing is when you in the league when you get traded the first thing is you know people talk about you they say this and that but my thing is when I first signed with Toronto I told everyone uh, the GM, the coach, whatever, and I got a chance to meet Trace and Vince. But my thing is being a leader, being accountable, working. And don't talk about it, do it, show it. I mean, be a leader at all times, no matter what it is, have guys back. And we told these guys when we was playing with them, other veterans too, y'all going to be the offense. we going to make things happen, set picks, make it easy for you. Your job is to score and be professional every night on and off the court. Well said. This is terrific reminiscing about what was uh, an amazing team back in 2000 with Charles Oakley sitting in front of me. <laughs> One of a kind in the history of the NBA. Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady. We're all back right after this and we'll ask the question, what if? All right, here is Vince Carter with his first stop. Let's go home. I say high point for the slam dunk competition back in 2000. Now, uh, back in our studio, Charles Oakley, back with us, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady. Is it true, Vince, you two guys almost didn't make it to the arena because they ran out of stretch limos? Wait, before, you, <laughs> before I tell that story, I want to say this, going back on what Oak just said. Uh, it's funny, what he said uh, just now about holding us accountable, he said in, front of the, uh, in the middle of the locker room, particularly pointing right at Tracy and I, <laughs> And, and he said exactly what was said right there, and you know, I, I think that was the stepping stone for our careers right there, understanding what, what, uh, what it took to be professionals and to make it in this league. But on to that, that dunk contest. First of all, it was the act of Congress to actually get <laughs> my cousin over here to actually participate in the dunk contest. And uh, so once I got in there, we were downstairs waiting for our cars. As you remember, and it was four of us. I don't know if you remember T Mac. It was four of us. And two of us, two of the four were probably well over 250. All right, <laughs> 270. And the stretch limo were all used up, so we had to take a sedan. I'll leave it at that. How, how, I, how many times, T Tracy, how many times did you practice your bounce pass to Vince? The little, for, the forgotten bounce pass, the key to the greatest dunk ever. Seriously. We, we never, we, we never, never practiced, practiced that. No. We never practiced that. Wow. But no, speak, speaking of that slam dunk contest, like, I'm tired of this dude, man. I was tired of this dude trying to get me to get in this slam dunk contest. Like, why am I getting in this slam dunk contest to either play second or third? Like, I already, <laughs> we already know who's going to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see, I see the slam dunk contest every day in practice. Like, I see these dunks, some of these dunks in the practice. And I see him in the game. So I'm like, why am I getting into this? Mm -hmm. I like to win stuff. I don't like to play second or third. So he kept, <laughs> he he kept, man, he kept begging me to get in. 
And at last minute, I was like, all right, man, I'll get in. And, you know, it just went from there. Let me, uh, let me ask this question because everybody wants me to ask this. It's the what if question. Right. What if Tracy would have stayed? What if you three guys would have had another, say, five years together? Do you ever ask yourself that, Vince? Like, what if, I st if we well, all stayed together? I'll say this. Uh, I can recall one All Star game, um, a couple of just. Even a couple of road games, we sat together just talking, like, you know, it would have been cool, what if, what if. But it's kind of one of those things like, what if? I mean, it's not guaranteed that we would have done something, but it's just, I think, the wow factor. Like, that team that we had was a very good team. And uh, I think, like I said, with the veteran leadership, I mean, you look at the veterans we had throughout the course of my time there, you know, Antonio Davis, we had Doug Christie at one time, we had Dee Brown, I mean, Alvin Williams. Muggsy Bogues, Mark Jackson, I mean, I can go on and on. We, we've had a, a great nucleus of guys, and I think we learned and we accomplished so much that first year. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we got swept in the playoffs, and, and you know, we, we accomplished a, a, a goal that, that was never reached in, in Toronto, and, um, you know, which is going to always bring up the thing, what if, but... You know. let, let me ask each one of you a specific question now. Charles, as, as a guy who saw great teams, as a guy who could step back and look at a team, if Tracy and Vince and you and some of the other names that he mentioned had stayed together, Kobe said in Slam Magazine they could have won championships. Do you agree? Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. No doubt. Wow. Um, I, I that felt either. that um, when we got here and, you know, learning the guys and other veterans, you know, been around the league and... I think that we, we just had some special. All the guys got along. Yeah. You know, I think that that was the key. We made one another respect one another, and we knew what we had to do. That's the key thing. Going to court, playing your game, playing within your skills. You know, we know Tracy, Deep. We had three point shooter. We had guys slash. So we had guys can just make plays. So we knew this. And we, the big guys, myself, Antonio, Kevin, we do everything inside. Bang, rebound, take care of them guys. I mean, when you got a greeting like that, it's hard to get that. It's hard to get guys' attention to, to get into the mode of playing your role, playing into the high active every night. And we did that. We got on one another. You know, I make sure the, the coach, you know, I stood on the coach. You I know, mean, yeah. see, a lot of thing is <laughs> managing, you know, only can see so much, but we did a lot inside the locker room, stayed in the locker room. Yeah. You know, see, yeah. That's what if manager knew what we was doing as a in the division and as a team, they would gave maybe they wouldn't trade some of the other guys. I mean, then the coach might say, Let's get rid of this guy, you know, like Lenny did, he said, Trade me and didn't know what I was doing. I was building a separate understanding with the guys than he was. And he yeah. didn't like that personal. Uh, before no. we go to break, Tracy, just tell me, do you regret um, maybe not staying in Toronto and trying to ha make a go with, with your cousin. Uh, obviously, you went on. You had a Hall of Fame uh, career. You made a ton of money. But um, do you ever regret not staying here? I won't use the word regret. Um, but I, I think it, it would have been something special. You know, and, and it's no, it's, there's no 1% no of doubt in my mind um, when those guys played Philadelphia in Game 7, had I been a part of that team, there's no question we would have advanced and went on to the finals that year. It's just no question in my mind. Just where I was uh, at the stage of my career where my cousin was and just the savvy vets that we had around us. I mean, we had the perfect situation, the perfect chemistry. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I do think about that. Uh, you know, I think about that, too. You're breaking my heart now. I, I, my <laughs> son and I, my, my son and I, I sat that shot, watching man. that game, God, holding man. hands, thinking, yeah. oh, man, this is it. This is it. Okay, we'll talk more about that when we return with, this is really quite amazing. Charles Oakley, T-Mac, and Vince Carter, and everybody's happy and enjoying it. No doubt. Baseline again. Jordan X. Charles Oakley makes like the guard in the lob. And it's Carter. Wow. Welcome back to OTR. Charles Oakley here in the studio. Vince Carter and his restaurant. Hey, by the way, why, why is Charles Oakley not your chef, Vince? <laughs> oh, don't worry. You know, he's still, he's still uh, involved with the NBA and, and doing his thing. But when he's done and he's ready, I got an establishment for him. Tracy, would you eat that meal? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, everybody's going to eat it. Believe me. <laughs>
Let's 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 talk about um, your your time in Toronto. And and there's there's really this is a question that people ask: Is Toronto a basketball city? We we know it's a hockey city. We know it was a baseball city. Um, Charles, do you think Toronto is a basketball city? I mean, they were making the transition from hockey to basketball, but they were selling out every night, and people was, was getting to understand basketball. They was you know a little slower learning. Um, they I don't know where they stand now, but. Hope they, you know, you should, as you go to games and watch over the years, you should learn and get better about the situation, what's going on. But um, I think they really supported the team. Um, we gave them our heart every night we played. Um, it was just, you know, they was learning the game, so they got caught up in the mix some nights about this and players. They really know players. And I don't know how they made the transition to learn the, the players as an individual, not just, you know, okay, well, he, this yep. guy in another city, we, we don't have nothing to do with him, this and that. What they, read they don't is, respect, exactly. they, they didn't respect the players when they left and come back, but we're not asking them back on their knees for us. Right. Vince, I, I want to know this because you, you were maybe the biggest celebrity in sports across Canada for a time. I mean, um, and, and North America, certainly, I, I know that you were probably the largest endorser, but then obviously you left and you came back. And you got booed. Did that? Did that? Get, getting away from all of the, you know, I got to be tough on the court. Did that hurt you? Well, let me say this. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, Oak did say is that they were learning the game, the transition. So they watched myself and, they tr and Tracy grow up. And when he left, they still got to see him flourish and, and become who he is. And, and myself and, and everybody else who actually uh, stepped through those uh, arena doors. And for me, I looked at it as a young child. Growing up into a grown man, and then he and he, he moved on, and and, and I and I get it, and and I think leaving hurt a lot of people. It it, it hurt me because I tell you what, I I accomplished a lot, I learned a lot, I became the player, the person, uh, who I am today because of that experience through the coaches, through the players, and and, and everything else. So I, I think leaving there, I mean, I, I get it. I, I know I, I get sports. You know, I'm a a sports fan. And, you know. I have my moments uh, when I boo other players. <laughs> right? Would you, so Vince? I would you have booed you? Uh, Vince? So I just knew it was one of those things that it hurt. It hurt on both sides, and of course I had a job to do uh, with the new team. So you just go in there and you play your best. But at the same time, I wanted to put on my best performance. Like, hey, you know, regardless, I'm, I'm still a, uh, I love the city. I still have friends there. Um, you know, my heart is still there because that's where it started. Tracy, when you came back, I mean, it was the same sort of situation. I mean, people stopped booing you only because they wanted to boo Vince. Uh, did, that, did, that, did that hurt you? I mean, you were young and, and you had good times in Toronto. What was it like coming back? I was excited about it. Uh, it didn't hurt me not one bit because uh, if they hadn't booed me, then they didn't care about you. <laughs> I, you know, they really didn't care about That's me. So point. I really embraced it. Uh, I felt like they really cared about me. And, you know, I still have a lot of friends up there. and. Uh, when I when I came back, I wanted to prove to them that uh, you know I was I was going to put it in their face uh, for booing me, and I was going to try to silence them every chance that I got. But I still got a lot of love for Toronto. I mean, that's where it first started, and uh, you know my heart is still there. And yeah, I, you know I I think about it all the time. What if? Yeah. We got to go to break, so I got to cut you off. I'm holding a bottle of water here, T Mac. How is this water different than any other water I might drink? Oh man, you got you got the oxygenated water, huh? We all natural, baby. Hey, you well, then I need some natural that, water in my restaurant, buddy. I'll give you some. I'll give you okay, some. Okay, so here's the combination: natural water in your restaurant uh, at Oak's, Oak's website, filter. where 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 you're, uh, and we all drive there in our Bentleys and we get the cars washed at Oak's your. Car. Yeah, at okay, your car wash. Okay, recycle. Okay. M more promotion in a second. <laughs> Blue 04, baby. Blue 04. <laughs> hey. Sometimes at this point in the show, I'm going, man, I can't wait for the show to be over. But today, so much to talk about. Vince Carter, quickly, let me fire a few questions at you. Do you believe your number 15 should be retired by the Raptors? Uh, I'm going to leave it up to, to the people. Uh, I mean, I, I was there to, to, to serve my purpose, and that's to, to be a professional and play the game the best of my ability. And I accomplished a lot there, you know, and I'll leave it at that. Should they retire his jersey, Oak? Yes, Tracy and Vince. I mean, Tracy Tracy was Tracy was was long ago. the long best ago. draft pick they had before Vince. I mean, it, they both did a lot. But my thing is, when you trade guys every two or three years, who knows? Are you going to retire in 20 years? Right. You got to retire someone. 
You put them both in the Hall of Fame? They got Hall of Fame numbers, both those guys. Yes, no doubt. They did. They've been a lot for the league. Houston and uh, Vince, you know, his career. Jersey, Orlando, Phoenix. I mean, you know, Toronto, more than Toronto, though. Vince, I got to ask you because people want me to ask you do you regret going to graduation the day of Game 7? Oh, uh, <laughs> People, people want to uh, know. I have, I, have a, uh, I have a degree. I accomplished a lot. I was there on time. And like, like uh, O can tell you, I was there. Um, I was able to prepare myself for, no. for, the, for Game 7. And, you know, the one thing I do say is if I make that shot, you wouldn't ask that question. No. Right. Not at all. And, and notice Not I wasn't giving all. my opinion. It's just. No, no, no. Well, no you, I, you, I, you put it on somebody else. The they I didn't go to my, gra because, you know, you go to my graduating class. I didn't go to my graduating class. Milwaukee, possibly to play in the finals. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, that Philadelphia uh, game, that Philadelphia series was like playing in the Eastern Conference finals right there. So uh, I think we had a great chance to go into the finals. So. I make it, you don't, you know, you don't. They even should think have brought that team back together. When you lose like that, you don't just separate. You bring that team back to get a chance to go yeah. back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't break a team up. Okay, got to wrap you guys up. Vince, you've got your Embassy of Hope Foundation. I know you're committed to all kinds of charities. People can check out the website, correct? Yes, absolutely. Also, you got to check out the restaurant. Uh, you know, and I also have a, um, a, a, a drug and alcohol uh, called the Saint Vince Car Sanctuary. Check that out as well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I've got T-Max Water. We've, we've already talked about your website. Yeah. So I think I've done everything but say go to uh, OTR Extended for okay, more. Okay, Oakley Collection off of K1X line is out now. Oakley Collection. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Peace. Fellas, man. Good talk. Right. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg. Brought to you by the...